What's going on boys and girls, my name is VK and welcome to a brand new exciting Premiere Pro tutorial here at the channel. It's been a while since the last one, but we're tackling with something pretty cool, pretty simple and really quick to do. So the thing we're gonna be trying out today is uh, having uh, like a character in a very colorful scene and we can see that the colorization or the saturation has totally disappeared from the character we are filming, in this case myself. And how we can do this inside Premiere Pro without ever touching Adobe After Effects. So some effects are really cool to do when you are in the editing stage so you don't have to mess around with other software. It's really cool to have them also uh, being able to done, be done inside other programs as like the editor itself, the Premiere Pro. So this is what we're gonna be uh, developing together. So let's go ahead and jump into a brand new clean slate here, a tutorial panel I have created here. And we have two different kind of uh, footages we want to work with. The first one, we have a clean plate uh, where we, whereas I have shot with the camera only like a still image. It's a video file, but still image off the frame or the background itself. So now, then we can put uh, like other things on top of it. The next thing we have is myself in that exact same scene, but now I'm in front of a green screen doing the things I wanna do. And then I can easily cut myself out of this green screen and then from there put myself on the background and then I can manipulate myself and the colorization. So I'm gonna show you how this is done. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the clean plate, we're just gonna put, the, put it down here um, here at the back to our base, we can zoom in to our, to our timeline here so we can see what we are doing here, like this. So we just have our clean play happening right here. Then we can take our green screen footage here, and we don't need the audio for for this example, but if you do have audio, there's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. So then we're just gonna find the point we wanna use. I wanna use this point here, which I used in the example, trim that down, bring it into comp super simple and super quick so we can see here that we have my myself and then if we turn this on and off we can have that we have the background which is not moving behind us we can see though a little change in lighting here but since we are cutting out myself from a green screen this will not really affect um the lighting uh, or the <clears throat> the yeah the overall lighting for the background since we are having similar lighting in both of these shots so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and mask around myself. So we just leave the access area of this black frame of the pop-up green screen all. So what we're going to do is select the clip, go to effect controls, go down to opacity. And here we can find this masking tool. From the masking tool, we're going to select that. And then we get this little pencil icon to our mouse. Now we're just going to create this really rough mask around myself like this, trying to capture as much of the motion I'm, I'm anticipating I'm going to move. So now it's really good to go through the movement and see if my head or arms, here we can see my arm is taking a little bit of a hit there. So we adjust the mask accordingly. So we can see that I can move freely inside this mask. Awesome. From there, we're gonna go ahead and use the ultra key effect. From the effects panel we can find here, and if you don't have it here, you probably have it here somewhere down in this uh, like media panel. You probably have the effects controls in another panel. I just keep them here at the right. It's very similar to After Effects. Also, I can have a larger list of effects there. I'll take the Ultra Key, I will drop it on here. And now let's do just some really simple um, Ultra Keying or actual Chroma Keying. So first I'm going to go to this key color, take this little color picker tool and select a color which is very close to my skin here. I will select something around here. And then of course you get the, uh, the obvious point here, don't have anything green on you while you're green screening since then you're going to key yourself out. Now we can see we, we have some a uh, little bit sh uh, like, um, like weird shading happening here, like it's not really matching up there. That's all. Uh, let's go to the alpha channel here at the output. Now it's on composite. Let's go to alpha channel. So we can see how much um, of this scene is going to be keyed out. So everything which is black is going to be perfectly and 100% keyed out, while the white one is the one that we're going to be seeing. So we want to clean up this a little bit this of this background. Let's go to matte generation here. And we go to put some shadow. We're going to drop that down a little bit. Let's go to the highlight. Recover a little bit of that. Yeah. Something like that. 
can play uh, also a little bit with the pedestal tolerance. And also with the transparency. And once you have a pretty cool, a uh, pretty clean like black and white key, we can go back to composite. We can see we're having a pretty good result here. Then what we can do is we can go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. We can see we have a little bit of this green spill happening around my hair. So we have another control here called spill suppression. And from there, I'm going to go to the, the spill here and just boost that up so we can see how it affects the, like the edges of my hair. And also I can play a little bit with the range here. So we're getting a little bit of a magenta cast there. So magenta is the opposite to green. So we can a little bit kill the green using a, just a touch of uh, like magenta. And also we can desaturate the edges just a touch. Yeah. Then we can go down to matte cleanup. Just clean the key. We can choke it down. So we, since so we don't have this edge around for example my hand we can see this little edge happening we do which we don't want let's choke it down just a touch and then we can soften it up so give a little feather there so it matches around with our scene not to be too sharp awesome let's make that let's give it let's give it a little look here okay we can do see we have a little bit of cleanup have to be done we can go to match generation and go to the the transparency here and clean that up to just touch. It's looking pretty solid, pretty good. Now, since we are seeing a little bit of desaturation happening around, we can go ahead and clean those up if we want to. For example, play, playing around a little bit with the choke option. But since we are going to be desaturating the, the entire uh, like image of myself, that's not really of a concern we have to tackle. So now once we have done that, we can go into the effects and find the Lumetri color effect. Lumetri color. So we're going to basic color grade or give a grade for this character. The first thing we're going to do is go to basic correction and drop the saturation down to 0%. We want him to be black and white. And now we can go ahead a little bit make him match the scene. So we can take down a little bit of the exposure, make maybe give a little more contrast here. Drop the shadows, something like that. So we just make him a super simple black and white picture here. And that looks pretty good. All right, so now once we have done the basic uh, foundation to the effect here, pretty much the whole effect here is done. Now we can go start manipulating it. Maybe basically building is to be a little bit more of an interesting shot here. So the first thing I wanna do, is I want to relocate myself. How I can do is I go to motion, the motion panel here, go down to motion and we can say, we can see that we get the control. So I can now move myself. I want maybe more myself to the third of the, of the image here, maybe scale myself up just a touch, just so I can basically like recompose in my, uh, recompose my, my shot here. So that's the first thing we want to do. Uh, then I want to drop this down because I do feel like I want to put some anamorphic bars on this to make it a little bit more cinematic-ish. <laughs> and then uh, what I want to do is that I want to put some... Yeah, I want to put the anamorphic bars and then I want to also blur the background just a little touch here. So let's go from the effects and find camera. Actually, we can go down. We have camera blur. Go to that. And now we can put this maybe to a value of four, just so we get this a little touch of camera blurness here, Add, adding some, so a little bit more separation. Usually, I also like to do is I go to video effects, go to blur and channel, and have just um, a little camera blur also. We can actually use camera blur on myself and just put one pixel of the camera blur just to soften up some of the sharp details I have on my face just to make it take a little bit of the digital sharpening happening our cameras away since I'm shooting on DSLR. Then what we can do is we have an adjustment layer. If you don't have, know how to create one, we go here and find adjustment layer. We can go to put that on top of the entire timeline, scale it up or trim it on top of everything. Then let's go to fr find frames, which is um, 
uh, a red giant plugin for you to create anamorphic bars. You can also manually create these anamorphic bars by taking adjustment layer, make it entirely black, or taking like a like a the um, color mat, take it out, okay, make it black here, color mat like this, and then put that on, uh, put that on top, and then through motion you can move it around and then do the calculations how you can get like fake anamorphic bars. But I'm gonna use frames since it does have all that pre-calculated. So go to crop, find anamorphic, and it should do the anamorphic bars pretty straight ahead for me. Uh, since the frames is a GPU plugin, it will take a little bit of um, performance of the computer to play with it. So if I turn it off, I can easily manipulate. Uh, since the mo the mo the motion uh, the mo the moment I turn on the adjustment layer, it the computer is pretty slow. You can see how it like does the affections really laggily. So I rather just turn it off so I can move my subjects and then reframe as I wish. Maybe I want to scale myself down just a touch. Like this. That looks pretty cool. Now what we can do is we can hit enter on our keyboard or return to add a little like fast render preview for this file and then we can see what we have created. All right, so here we have our final result. Myself completely desaturated in front of this nice blurry background done with the green screens all inside Premiere Pro. That was a real cool project. Hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you guys did enjoy this tutorial, please hit me a like and a comment down below. Don't forget to consider subscribing if you never want to miss out on a new video. Ring that notification bell so you get notified when that happens. And until guys next time, my name is VK. And I'll see you guys in the next exciting tutorial. Peace out.